In this episode, a docile-looking lioness launches itself at a car in South Africa's Lion Park. The unsuspecting visitor has nothing to protect her from the jaws of one of Africa's top predators. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying lion attack on Catherine Chappelle. Welcome to Final Affliction. Catherine Chappelle worked as a special effects editor in the movie industry. Her long list of accolades includes Game of Thrones, Captain America, Divergent, and Godzilla. But she also had a passion outside of the movie business. This was wildlife and the conservation of it. She was determined to help wildlife experts in the great South African bush. A few months prior to her visit to South Africa, she set up a GoFundMe page to raise money for conservation group Wildlife ACT. She reported on her social media that she would be helping with tracking and monitoring animals, participating in poaching prevention techniques, supporting veterinarians, and helping to relocate game. It was to be the adventure of a lifetime. She ventured to South Africa in June 2015 during a break in her work. Volunteering in one of the game reserves was her main interest, but she also hoped to make a film about animal poaching one day. So, this was also a form of research for her future project. She flew from Canada via London to Johannesburg. She stayed in a guest house in the city suburb of Melville. During her visit to South Africa and following her conservation work, Catherine also organized to visit Lion Park in Gauteng, Johannesburg. She had enjoyed Joburg so far, posting photos of herself drinking refreshing cocktails and commenting on how cheap the food was in the city. For her visit around Lion Park, she chose to be shown around by tour operator Calabash Tours. Her guide for the day was Pierre Potkita, the owner of the tour company. He was a 66-year-old guide, born and bred in South Africa. The park consisted of a 20-acre enclosure, which is reported to house 85 lions. It has been visited by famous people in the past, including singers John Legend and Shakira. It offers an up-close and personal experience with one of South Africa's top predators. As cars enter the park, there are numerous warning signs telling people to remain in their vehicles, to keep their doors locked and windows closed. But people don't always follow the rules, and this is what happens when they don't. Although Catherine may have been a genius behind the camera and on the special effects computer, she didn't show any signs of genius when she entered Joburg's Lion Park. Passing through the tall metal gates and into the lion enclosure, Almost immediately, Catherine could see the resident lions. Most were lying on the grass, sunning themselves in the sunshine. They looked docile and tame, but these lions were anything but. They may not have had the freedom to roam in the likes of South Africa's enormous expanse of Kruger National Park, but they were by no means tame. You can take the animal out of the wild, but you cannot take the wild out of the animal. A male and female lion lay peacefully on the verge. Pierre pulled up alongside them. Catherine had her camera at the ready. As soon as he stopped the 4x4, she began snapping away. They were just feet from the animals. Zooming in through her camera lens, Catherine could see the tiniest of details, the fine fur on their muzzles, the deep brown eyes, and white canine teeth as they panted in the afternoon sun. Instinctively, Catherine wound down the window to get a clearer shot. As she did so, the lion's faces came into sharp focus. She marveled at their beauty, their graceful presence, and calm demeanor. But that demeanor was about to change. The female lion stood up. She stretched her backside into the air, her huge front paws flexing on the soft ground. She yawned, her upper lip revealing her teeth. Then she turned towards Catherine. All the while, Catherine continued to snap her photographs. They were the perfect shots. The park was full of tourists. A line of cars lined the road behind Catherine and Pierre's car, each waiting for their chance to look at the lions, just feet from their cars. But the cars immediately behind Pierre's had spotted Catherine's window open and her black camera lens poking out. They could see the lioness approaching the vehicle while the young woman did nothing. Perhaps she couldn't see it. 
Perhaps she was too focused on the male lion at the time, with one eye closed and the other honed in on the male's spectacular mane. Maybe Catherine was oblivious to the imminent danger she was in. The other drivers began to honk their horns, concerned for the woman's safety. The honking of the horns did nothing to alert Catherine or Pierre. It did nothing to deter the approaching lioness. Instead, the female leapt up to the SUV, her front paws locking onto the side of the metal, the full weight of her body pushing against the vehicle. Catherine jumped backwards, but there was nowhere for her to go. She fumbled with her seatbelt. She hadn't expected the lion to jump up like that. Now she was face to face with the predator. She could smell its breath. She looked directly into its eyes. The lion was nearly as tall as the 4x4 when she stood on her hind legs. An incredibly powerful beast with thousands of years of killing instinct packed into an incredibly muscular body. Catherine couldn't close the window. That would mean leaning towards the lion. It would mean pushing its head back out of the window so that she could reach the button. Catherine's heart thundered in her chest. She felt her adrenaline pulsating through her body, wondering what to do. But even in those first few seconds, she didn't believe the animal would attack. The relaxed nature of the park, the docile-looking lions, led her into a false sense of security. The lioness's head almost filled the whole window. It was so much bigger close up than Catherine could ever have imagined. It paused in the window for a few seconds. It was assessing the situation, making sense of the people inside the car. Then, a split second later, the lioness lunged at Catherine. The 29-year-old screamed as she felt the lion clamp its jaws down around her shoulder and neck, the sharp canines torn into her flesh, severing blood vessels. Pierre leaned across Catherine. He tried desperately to hit the lioness, to push her away, but she was too strong. She was too powerful. The lioness ripped apart Catherine's shoulder and neck and then jumped down from the vehicle. The car immediately behind could see fresh blood dripping from its mouth, its muzzle wet with red. The male lion stood up, but the other lions nearby didn't flinch. They didn't move. They had just watched on as the female had made her attack. It was over with after a few seconds. But to their horror, the attack didn't end there. The female decided to pounce once more. This time she dived straight at the window, her head pressed into the car. She grabbed Catherine once more and tore at her face before retreating once again. In less than a minute, the lioness had caused catastrophic injuries to the young American girl. Pierre called for help on his phone and tried to stem the bleeding. He felt his legs grow weak. He felt an overwhelming pressure building in his chest, a sense of impending doom. But he fought through the agonizing sensation now gripping his chest. He applied pressure to Catherine's neck. A ranger drove at the lioness, chasing her away with his Land Rover. More staff arrived at the scene as Catherine was pulled out of the vehicle and laid on the ground. One of the staff members froze. Pierre shouted at them to help him administer first aid, but the worker was in an apparent state of shock. They hesitated, reluctant to get involved, costing Catherine precious seconds that she didn't have. After what felt like an eternity for Pierre, an ambulance finally arrived, but it was too late. Paramedics tried to revive Catherine, but she had lost too much blood. There was nothing they could do. Described by her sister as fearless, it seems Catherine had a great appetite for adventure and was enthusiastic to try new things. Her boyfriend broke down at her memorial service, speaking of their final conversation together, in which he warned her to be careful and for her to remember that she's a city girl. Pierre was heartbroken. In fact, doctors at the hospital, after patching up his severely bitten arm, confirmed he had suffered from a heart attack at the time of the lion attack. The overwhelming pain in his chest had been his heart, but he had bravely fought through it to try to protect his client. Of course, following the incident, questions were asked of Pierre and his company, Calabash Tours. Some eyewitnesses said that they had seen the driver's side window open as the car drove around the park. Catherine was then merely following his example. Yet another thing she witnessed that lulled her into a false sense of security. But Pierre strongly denies this. 
He knew the rules. He knew it was dangerous to drive through lion territory with car windows open. The lion park refused to close the park following the incident, and the lion was not put down for her actions. Rangers said at the time she was in estrus and ready to mate. This may have led to her being particularly defensive and wary of encroaching visitors. Remarkably, despite the desperately sad news of Catherine's death traveling fast, the very next day, visitors to the park continued to drive through the enclosure with their windows wound down. It seems some people just won't learn from the mistakes of others. It is only a matter of time before someone else meets their tragic final affliction.